Gregory Isaacs, one of reggae music's most celebrated and revered artists. A man with a voice so smooth, it's almost like it was dressed in silk and satin. But even though he was the cool ruler, there was something just too hot to handle that ruled Gregory. He cracked under pressure to cocaine. Here's the story of Gregory Isaacs' love affair with hard drugs. Gregory Isaacs was born in Denham Town, a poor and rugged community in West Kingston, where he developed a rich love for music. But as soon as Gregory Isaacs started to make his mark in music in the 1970s and 80s, his circle changed. As the hit songs came in, so did money, and he started to rub shoulders with the uptown posse, the rich and the famous. Now that included politicians, businessmen, and other artists who were long established in the music industry before Gregory Isaacs and therefore had a lot more exposure to the social happenings and had much more money. Now that's where cocaine soon followed in Gregory Isaacs life. In the 70s and especially the 80s, cocaine use was quote unquote cool and it was an elite drug floating into Jamaica from Colombia during the heights of Pablo Escobar's reign. Even though the use of cocaine wasn't widespread in Jamaica at that time, the elite groups had easy access to it, you know, smuggling it in the country to use for their pleasure. And when Gregory Isaac started to hang out with the socialites, that was when the white lady found her way in Gregory Isaac's arms. Gregor Isaac's wife, June, acknowledges that Gregor Isaacs was drugged by the new friends. In an interview with Dancehall Mag, she says, He had a lot of new friends, a new lifestyle, and I noticed that a lot of money was disappearing. I was managing the African Museum, his record store, and some mornings I would notice that large sums of money was being taken, and it was by him. Now, she didn't actually see Gregory using the drugs at the time, but she saw changes in his actions and she heard rumors. But those rumors turned truth when she realized Gregory Isaacs had a passion for the pipe. She caught him in the act. She says, it started as an accident. He hid it from us all. I accidentally found out. However, it got to the point where he started doing it in the room with me. Just lock up and smoke. We were not educated a lot about cocaine at the time. I was helpless, not knowing what to do. You see, Gregory Isaacs never took cocaine by injection as most people did at that time. He actually smoked it which gave him a quicker high. But Gregory's new high brought him a new low. Even though he was still recording and performing, he began to lose shows because he would miss flights, failing to turn up for shows, so promoters got fed up and stopped booking him. Gregory Isaac's cocaine habits also led to him losing a major international record deal. June Isaacs has no issue revealing that her husband's favorite pastime led to time passing by, as he had no regard for time while drugged. In a Gleaner interview on May 15, 2019, she says, it was a very, very expensive habit, to the extreme point where we lost the house. He consumed so much in that time, I can't even tell you. I had to take what I could to make sure everything else was okay. A lot of cash went along that wayside. It was also hard for him to keep his appointments. He kept being late for flights. He was a constant no-show for shows, which was a big problem and because of that island records had to drop him he didn't have any regard for time he would just spend hours locked away smoking the continuous cocaine consumption contributed to character contradiction as Gregory isaacs had mood swings the usually cool calm and collected gregory became aggressive paranoid and insecure under the influence and June Isaacs describes him as a total different man to the one she met in 1980. He was like a stranger in town. Speaking about Gregory Isaacs mood swing, June Isaacs says, I don't know if he ever came close to ODing, that's overdosing, 
but I have had some frightening experiences. With the drug came mood swings, came insecurities, came withdrawals and paranoia. At times, I would really, really be sorry for him. Of note, in the 1970s and 80s, Gregory Isaacs was a professed Rasta man making his use of cocaine even more of a contradiction, compromising to his Rastafarian principles. Through the use of cocaine, Gregory Isaacs lost close friends, family bond, and it significantly hampered his career. He had several run-ins with the law, and he was arrested nearly 30 times. He was convicted for six months for illegal gun, and the news of his cocaine addiction began to spread giving birth to the rumor that he was a big drugs dealer and not only involved with cocaine but ganja smuggling. But Gregory Isaacs aptly addressed those rumors with the song Rumors singing Rumors them spreading, claim a sense me planting But I'm one of Danny na the juggling, I be a rumors a go on. Now clearly Gregory Isaacs sing it better than me but you get the gist. June also had to face the jail cell for her husband on several occasions. She says, I went to jail on numerous occasions just owning the stuff so he could travel. He was the breadwinner after all. I don't think he loved the drugs more than me. The drugs was just overpowering to the extent he just had no control. His song Hard Drugs is seemingly a confession to his addiction to cocaine because in it he sings the more them get it is the more them want it talking about the hard drugs and indeed the more Gregory got it was the more Gregory wanted it and it might sound harsh but unfortunately Gregory Isaac was a crackhead in the city although Gregory Isaac faced a battle against cocaine addiction he wasn't one man against the world because he had his night nurse now you see, Night Nurse is one of Gregory Isaacs most famous songs and a lot of people think that Gregory Isaacs was singing about his use of drugs in the song. But that is what I call the misdiagnosis of Night Nurse because Gregory Isaacs was really singing about his wife and not drugs. You see, June was always there for him during his drug struggles and as Gregory Isaacs said himself, when you feel sick your belly a hurt you or you have a headache in the night the first person you draw for is your woman whether she make a cup of tea or whatever she have to do she really the first nurse deal with you so that is the clearest indication that night nurse the song was really a dedication to his wife june and not to drugs but as much as june was loyal and steadfast in her aim to help her husband beat the drugs addiction at some point, the pill was just too hard to swallow and she could no longer deal with the stress of what Gregory Isaac's addiction brought. He was not willing to admit he was addicted and so therapy was on and off. So she had to prescribe a bitter medicine. Now, June reveals, Once when he went on tour, I split the house in two and tell him to stay on the other side. He wasn't having it. No one slept that night. I was serious couldn't bear it no more, I stood my ground. Gregory Isaac's persistent use of cocaine and denial of his addiction and unwillingness to get treatment led to a separation from his wife. June Isaacs reveals, it became unbearable. I think it was about 2006, 2007. I said no. Now during that period between 2006 and 2007, Gregory Isaacs took a battering. He reported lost his teeth due to crack cocaine addiction. In later years, his voice lost much of its melody and potency. He was later diagnosed with lung cancer. It later spread all over his body and he died on October 25, 2010 in London. But despite the struggle, through it all, Gregory Isaacs might have lost some of himself, but he remained a solid father to his 10 children none of whom he had with June, but even to her, he remained a good husband, as good as he could have been amid the addiction. 
But ultimately, it's sad to know Gregor Isaacs wasn't able to cool down the pace and realize that hard drugs was not the way. And while his legacy lives on as people worldwide continue to tune into his songs, that legacy was tarnished by a life cut short by his dabbling with cocaine and by his own admission he lost his freedom to the hands of the white lady. But even at his lowest point, Gregor Isaacs took lessons from his addiction. He said, It's the greatest college I've been to, the cocaine school, but also the most expensive school fees that I have ever paid. I learned a lot from it, both good and bad. I wouldn't encourage anybody to try it. Reggae my lightest. This is the button the people. Make sure you like this.